Hello everyone, welcome back once again. In this video, we will explore WordPress inside the Visual Studio 2019. We will also build a WordPress web application using the ASP.NET Core. But before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So WordPress is a free and open source content management system written in PHP and paired with MySQL or MariaDB. Features include a plugin architecture and a templating system, also known as the WordPress theme. So to get started, obviously you need to have a, a, the latest version of the Visual Studio 2019. And also you have to have installed the .NET Core framework as well. So, if you've got all that bit sorted out, and also you need to have a um, MySQL installed on your on your on your system. So to get started, we have to obviously click on the new um, file, new project, or we can click on the start window. So here we can create a new project. So here in the new project dialog, we will select the ASP.NET Core Web Application. So we click on the next. And here we're just going to leave the conf configuration as they are. Then we click on the create. So here we will select empty ASP.NET Core Web Application. So if you look here, we've got .NET Core and we're using the 3.1 version. So we will remove the configure HTTPS as it's not really required so as you can see here we we've got we've got empty and pretty much nothing inside so what we do is just click on the create so this might take a while to actually load all the project um, requirements so as you can see here now we've got an mtsp.net core web application created so what is really ASP.NET Core? So ASP.NET Core is a cross-platform high-performance open source framework for building modern cloud-enabled internet-connected applications with ASP.NET Core. You can build web applications and services or Internet of Things applications and mobile backends. Use your fav favorite development tools on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Deploy to cloud on on premises and then run on .NET Core. So let's get to it again then. So since we've got this bit sorted out, we have to we come to the server and we come inside and add a new connection. So here we come we click on the add connection. So here if you have if you've actually installed the mysql then you should find mysql database if you haven't then i've got an upcoming video that will actually address that so we select mysql database click on ok so here we actually put the database um, detail so the server name is it's a local host and then the username is root and then the password you actually chose for your database so here we can actually click on the test connection to test the database connection as you can see i've got <coughs> the connection succeeded so here we can enter the database name if we haven't created it then we can add any like any name so that we we create it once we click on the okay so i've actually added wordpress one so here so as you can see create database so the database wordpress one does not exist or or do not have a permission blah 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 so would you like to create it so we click on the yes to create a database in this case right now we are actually going to wait for the database to be created so click ok so as you can see we've got wordpress one 
created and we look at the tables we've got nothing inside the tables fresh it it's nothing inside so now that we've got the database created the next bit of course is we have to install a plugin and it's actually it's a pitch pied wordpress asp.net core plugin so we come inside the, the package manager console so here we type in this this command install package pitchpied.wordpress.asp.net core dash version so the version is 5.1 i mean 5.5.1 dash preview one so you click on ok to get all the necessary stuff installed so i'm just gonna pause the video while the whole thing installs so we've got the the nuget package installed so as you can see after the installation we've got a folder wordpress folder open i mean added to it here so we've got the usual wordpress stuff in here so we're not going to look too much into that as it's just a dll so the next bit of course is um to be able to run it we have to come inside the startup dot cs so inside the startup dot cs this is what we will put inside so we put the services dot add wordpress so as you can see now we can we've got this extension add wordpress so here we can put options so so here we could say options dot db host is equal to localhost so options dot db name so here we're gonna put the name that we gave the database is word press one We got options dot db user so this will be your database user then we have options dot db password this will be the, the database or the server password so here you can put the password that applies to your server so after this bit is completed then we come inside the configure bit here so here we say up up dot add wordpress dot use wordpress actually so once we've got this bit added this should be fine so the next bit is of course is we're going to run it so i'm just going to run it but i will enter my password before i run it so i'm just going to pause it add my password and run it so it will actually come up on the next page so just hold on so I've added my password, so I'm just going to run it. So let's see what actually comes out of it. So as you can see here now, I've got the WordPress running now. So I'm just going to choose the country as United States. Click on the continue. So we can give this a name. YouTube 202. So we can add a username as well we're just gonna call it admin so we're just gonna have a password so we've got the password here then any email so now 
we can actually click on the install the WordPress. So as you can see uh, on the on this side, we've got the whole thing working out now. So here we're just gonna log in. So here we're just gonna put our admin and then the chosen password. So as you can see here now, we've got the WordPress admin dashboard showing. So if we come inside, uh, if we stop it, we actually stop it from running, open the server explorer and refresh the tables. As you can see, so we've got the WordPress data, database tables created and added to our database table. So I will leave it here for now. So right now, as you can see, you can run it and you can play with it. So in the next video, I will show you how you can actually extend this in terms of building um, plugins and whatnot. So once again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do because I've got lots of videos coming up. And I hope you have a lovely day. Stay blessed. Stay tuned. Bye bye.